Okay, Mrs. Howard's chemistry class, we are ready for Unit 10, Heat and Thermochemistry, and we're starting on the first part, or the first uh, PowerPoint. This is PowerPoint number one, and I just liked the little comic on there, so enjoy it. Okay, so we're talking Roman numeral number one on your notes, energy. And energy, there's a standard definition for energy, and that's simply the ability to do work or supply heat. So if we look at that, um, one Probably the first definition you guys learned was the ability, that energy is the ability to do work. But we're going to add a little bit something to that, and that's going to supply heat. Because we're going to talk thermochemistry, and thermo deals with heat. All right, so there's some pieces of information that you probably already know, but I'm just going to remind you about here. First of all, energy is not mass. You know, everything in the universe is made of either energy or mass. Energy or matter, one of the two. So energy is weightless, it's massless, no no mass whatsoever. It's odorless, it doesn't smell, it doesn't have a taste to it. It's not made of atoms. Energy is not made of atoms at all, so it's not matter. There are a lot of different kinds of energy. If you can hear me speak, then you're hearing sound energy. Um, you guys all know if you crank up your stereo or your speakers in your car really loud, you can feel the dashboard or, or the table or something vibrate because sound has is a form of energy, and it can cause things to move. Or it can, and when you cause something to move, you can actually cause it to do work, or you can use it to do work. If you look on the back of your periodic table, there is uh, an equation for work. How do you calculate work? And it's force times distance. So if you can get something to move, then you've enabled it to do work, and that's what energy is used for. All right. Again, there are lots of different types or forms of energy. You can have kinetic energy, and kinetic energy refers to um, energy of motion. It's got to be moving to be kinetic energy. You see the lovely woman down in the yellow, uh, sorry, I don't know my colors anymore, in the pink shirt at the bottom, and she's moving. So kinetic energy is energy of motion. If you're blinking your eyes, then it's kinetic energy. A second type of energy that we'll talk about, too, is potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy energy. So it's energy that's, it, it, it's when something has the capacity, it's stored, it's not doing work yet, but it's got that ability. It's kind of like um, if you have those little ballpoint pens where they click up and down, and you've taken them apart and they've got that little spring on the inside, if you're just holding the spring in your hand, it's not doing any work and it doesn't really have much work to do, or it doesn't really have much stored energy. But if you compress the spring and hold it as tight as you can, it's not doing work, but if you let that go, it moves, right? And if you set it up in maybe a little, I don't know, some little weird thing where you can get it to hit something when you let it go, it can cause something to move. And again, work is when you can get something to move over a distance. So you use a force to get it to move over a distance. Now, it's not your mom's definition of work because her definition of work is go in there and do the dishes or clean your room. Technically, the definition for work is getting that, using that force to move something across a distance. So potential energy is like stored energy. You can store it in chemical bonds like, ah, I have my Dr. Pepper here loaded with sugar. And if my body can break the bonds between those um, atoms, then it can use the energy that's released when it combines it into something else to form another substance like ATP. You remember ATP from biology, adenosine triphosphate? It's the high energy molecule of the body. On the tax test, you'll have both of these equations on there where you'll have to calculate either kinetic energy or potential energy. And if you look on the back of your periodic table, kinetic energy is one-half times the mass times the velocity squared. Potential energy on the tax test, they only are focused on gravitational potential energy. So if you have something set up on a shelf, it has potential energy because if you knock it off or the shelf moves, then it can cause something to move across a distance, and that's work. So it's got the ability to do work. Heat energy. Heat is a form of energy. It's thermal energy. We say heat. Every time you hear that word thermal, you need to think heat. So heat's a form of energy, too. Heat is really tough for us to, our, as humans, to kind of grab it and use it in any, in any form. It, it tends to, by the time it's formed into change from, say, kinetic to poten or from potential to kinetic to heat, heat, we tend to lose a lot of that, so we can't capture it and make it do work for us. We can get some of it, but not really a whole lot, usually. The more efficient a machine is, generally, the less heat it's getting rid of. Because heat's not considered, if you're putting out a lot of heat, you're not considered to be uh, having a really efficient machinery. C 
sound energy. Again, we talked about that a little bit before. All right, so here is a typical tax question. Um, we've got potential energy is capital PE, and potential energy is mass times gravity times height. You don't have to memorize what gravity is. It's on the chart on the back of your periodic table. So we have the mass. Look at the 95-kilogram rock. We have the height. It's 100 meters off the ground. And gravity, if you look on the chart, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. So 95 kilograms, there's the mass, times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height, 100 meters. Multiply all those together, and you come up with your answer. I'll expect you to be able to do that. That's a really, really simple um, computation to do. And I don't have my calculator in my hand right now, or I would do it for you, and it's not happening. I'm going to see if I can pause this, because I just heard my dog yelp outside. And, oh, lo and behold, I don't think I can pause it. Where is it? Oh, well, I'm going to yell. Hey, Kelly, one of your dogs just yelped. Can we go check? I'm so sorry. Now, energy can be changed from one form to another. So if you flip a switch to turn the fan on, you just change the electrical energy to mechanical energy. If you flip the light bulb, flip the switch again, you turn the light bulb on, you just changed electrical energy to light energy. Light's a form of energy. Um, if we stick a pencil into the electric pencil sharpener, again, we use a lot of electricity. So we're changing that electrical energy into mechanical energy again. Um, if you're warming some water up on it for a coffee pot or a little electric pot, again, electrical to heat. So we can do a lot, and it doesn't all have to be electrical, not at all, but it can be. And those are the easiest ones because we really use electricity a lot um, in our homes and at school to get work done. Even the batteries that we have in your um, in your calculators, or you hook, you've got batteries hooked up to your your computers or your iPhones, then, you know, that's chemical energy that's converted to electrical energy. Okay, capital letter B on your notes, the law of conservation of energy. This is also known as, aka, also known as the law, of, uh, first law of thermodynamics. If there's a first law, there's also going to be a second law. And as weird as it may seem, there's also a zeroth law, which is just wrong, isn't it? Okay, so... The first law of thermodynamics, or the law of conservation of energy, says that in any chemical or physical process, energy is neither created nor destroyed. So that last line right here is really important. That's what you, that should be familiar. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. You are not God, and you cannot create energy out of nothing, nor can you destroy it where it's no longer there. So law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. There's just a little piece of it in the front that's added that says that in any chemical or physical process, which basically means anything, energy is neither created nor destroyed. We usually put that in combination with the law of conservation of mass or the law of conservation of matter. Matter and mass, a lot of times they'll, they'll, they'll swap back and forth. So uh, matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed, just change from one form to another. So we don't create energy, and we don't, are they Okay. Thank you. We don't create energy or we don't destroy it, but we can change it from one form to another. Okay. So again, an alternate way of saying that is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be changed from one form to another. So we can change chemical energy, when I drink my Dr. Pepper, into mechanical energy. The muscles of my mouth are moving the bones of my jaws up and down. My tongue's moving, so I've changed that chemical energy to mechanical energy, and then I'm saying words. I'm creating it, converting it to sound energy. So chemical to mechanical or kinetic, and then into sound energy. So it's pretty cool. <clears throat> all energy, no matter what, when you have a system, all the energy has to be accounted for. Whether it's in the form of work, or heat, or potential energy, the stored energy there, it's all, it all has to be accounted for. So when we say thermochemistry, we're talking about the heat changes that occur in chemical reactions. So thermal heat and chemistry, we're talking about chemical reactions. So you put those two together and, and you get a lot of information out of that. The chemical equations, the reactions, you know, the balanced equations that we've seen, haven't included energy in them. But you can stick stuff in there and say, hey, if you take this methane gas or propane gas and you burn it, not only are you going to get carbon dioxide and water, but you're also going to get X, number, X amount of energy. 
so they can calculate that. Somebody, thank goodness, has done all that for us. Okay, so chemical and physical changes are always, always, always associated with energy changes. Sometimes it's enough that we can actually feel it with our hands. We can feel the heat change with our hands. Um, not always. Because our, our hands aren't the best sensors for heat changes or, or heat or cold changes. But we can um, test the temperature change with thermometers. And we have some really great digital thermometers that we can use. Always remember that matter and energy are neither created nor destroyed. That's the base of chemistry. It's the base of physics, even. That first law of thermodynamics. Energy and matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Lesson, children. So we'll finish with this one, and we're ready to start on part two.